Okay, so we are go. Um, yeah, I don't want my neighbours thinking I'm talking to myself. Um, but anyway, it was a big secret and it took so much effort and so much you know so much emotional and physical effort to keep it a secret as anybody who's ever tried to hide mental health difficulties will know um we did not get a lot of support from the services um where i was from it was basically if she you know when i came home from abroad i needed serious counseling and it was basically a case of when she tries to kill herself bring her back and we'll bump her up the list because she's she's on a waiting list and that's the end of it um and eventually something did happen like I, I didn't try to take my own life um but something did happen um and I'm not putting it up here for fear of triggering people but something did happen and I was brought back into counseling but that was the level of services that we were given you know if she becomes a, a total danger to herself we'll take her in so we no support we no services we no education um but I somehow managed to pull through because I always believe that there is hope there it's it's just a case and I always will get better it's just a case of figuring out a way to do it and figuring out a way to get to that point okay so sorry if the angles change in this video I just had to take my memory card out wipe it and uh, put it back in I'm still waiting for my 32 gigabyte memory card it's very frustrating anyway I'm not gonna try and not ramble on a little bit too much more basically the point of it was that my mental health was the biggest part of my life it was also the thing I was m probably most ashamed of um, and all that effort and energy that was put into hiding it should have been spent doing things I had you know I didn't have a fantastic childhood because of it um, even though I two very loving parents and I had a safe secure home my childhood was gone because it was kind of constantly bounced around between psychologists and then as I got a bit older psychiatrists and counsellors and all that kind of thing and all of this I was working so hard to keep a secret and it was completely and utterly draining um eventually I did get myself into quite a good place because like I said I'm I'm fairly I'm not always the strongest but I do believe that if you put the work in you will get the reward at the end which is hopefully to have a normal enough life so I went back to college as a mature student the honours bachelor of arts in modern sociology from DCU and um, which I'm very proud of Um, sometimes forget I have it forget I went through it but basically what happened is I decided I was going to go back into counselling in college um, and unfortunately I was misdiagnosed with having OCD with intrusive thoughts now I don't know a lot about that as a diagnosis so I'm not going to go into details about it but basically they thought that the intrusive thoughts was my fear of being sick which I now know not to be the case and um, I was sent to the lady who was the DCU psychiatrist at the time and um, I was put on a absolutely massive, massive rigmarole of all the wrong tablets because I was diagnosed with the wrong condition. Um, I developed an addiction to Xanax, which I, I very rarely talk about. Um, I had to go through the withdrawals from that when I was in Pats for the first time. I was admitted to a psychiatric hospital. Um, I met her in the summer and the psychiatrist, I met her in the summer and then by November, just a few days after, my birthday i was told that i was going into parts of the psychiatric hospital in ireland a private psychiatric hospital needless to say i was terrified um i've talked about that on my blog before i'll link the blog below about admissions and that kind of thing um so i started seeing this doctor at the very end of second year in college um and then by the beginning of third year i'd been admitted to pats um now i deferred my third year and then I came back and I was doing well and I was due to go back and then unfortunately I had a depressive state and I went back into baths um, and I uh, obviously had to tell the college so the college knew the extent of what was going on um, and I eventually came back final year and um, I came out of paths and I, I kind of got through my final year. Um, the college put me in touch with an organisation called Please Talk. Um, it is a student kind of led initiative in Ireland which goes to talking about your mental health. Um, and they very kindly asked me to be involved in a campaign called I Talk. I'll link Please Talk's uh, website below. So they were gonna, they did like life size cardboard cutouts of all of us that were involved in it. And I
I was like, okay, this is going to be all over college. Um, and, you know, I still hadn't come out at that stage about my mental health. I think people still thought I was quite standoffish. I didn't drink because of all the medication. And obviously that made college very difficult. Um, and obviously I deferred a year. So I was with a group of people I didn't know. Found it very, very hard to kind of integrate back in. And obviously nobody knew my, nobody, nobody knew my situation. But I went to Trinity College to meet the other people who were taking part in this Please Talk, I Talked campaign. And they were all kind of like myself. They were college going or they were about my own age or, you know, they were from various parts all over, all over the country. And I remember it, it kind of struck me that I was sitting there in Trinity College and we were discussing our problems and what life had thrown at us and what they had gone through. And they were very open about their mental health with people around them. And I was looking around me and I was like, these people are amazing. I was like, I don't look at them and think they're freaks because of their mental health. I don't look at them and think they're less than a full person because of their mental health. I was like, if I look at them that way, well, then maybe people will look at me that way. Maybe people won't think I'm a freak if I'm public about my mental health. Maybe people won't think I'm somehow lacking because I have mental health issues even though I did and I, I still I still do feel that an awful lot but I decided then on the way home from Trinity in the bus I went onto my Facebook page on my phone and I put in the entire story of my illness about the fact that I had started off my final year in a psychiatric hospital uh, the fact that I was on medication and I did kind of a fairly long-winded post and I remember typing it and I remember shaking so so much because I didn't know how people would react I didn't know how my parents would react and um, my dad was on Facebook because he was living abroad again at the time um, I didn't know how people would respond to it so I typed it and then I just closed Facebook down and I just went home and I kind of told my parents what I did. I rang them and I told them what I did and I explained to them why I did it. And then a few years later, a few years, a few minutes, a few hours later even, I opened Facebook and the response was completely overwhelming. Um, I don't have Facebook anymore. I've deleted it because it's not good for my head. Um, but I'm so sorry that I didn't take a snapshot or a screenshot of the response that I got. I'd never had so many likes in a post. I've never had so many responses on a post and none of them were negative. Not a single person said to me, you're a complete nutcase. You know, what are you doing? You've been in a psychiatric hospital, get away from me. None of them were that. Um, and it was really, really moving. I remember being like absolutely in floods of tears reading it because for years, like years and years and years, I had hit this as my dirty little secret that there was something fundamentally wrong with me and people would never would never accept me for who I was they would never understand the gravity of the situation um and I was so wrong um and it, it was really really moving um the only downside to it is I thought that it would change how people reacted to me in college I thought people maybe would be a little bit more open with me and um would maybe talk to me even about it the next day and nobody really came up to me in college and talked to me about it and I think it was a very strange mix of emotions because on the one hand I was so elated about getting this story out there and then on the other hand I was like oh god this actually you know it, it doesn't make socializing with people for me any easier um and like I said, I will do a full video on how anxiety has affected friendships and relationships and that kind of thing. Um, but it was out there. It was out there. And I suppose as well, a big part that I, I missed on this story is that when I came out of Pats the very first time, I started my blog anonymously because I thought, my God, I'm totally alone here. College life had totally moved on without me and um, nobody in college knew where I was so I couldn't really talk to people. There was one one girl um, who I, I'm still in touch with today who knew where I was, who knew where I was going um, but that was it, there was there was nobody, nobody else and I couldn't talk to anybody, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really connect with anybody. Like when I was in Pats I had this kind of whole community of people who were going through the same thing um, 
Now, granted, I was the youngest by a long shot when I was in Pats, when I was in the ward. There is a, an adolescent ward there, but I was the youngest by a long shot. Um, and, you know, like, it, it was just, when I came home, I had nobody to talk to, I had nothing, and I had so much left to say. I had so many emotions still left after going through the experience of Pats, which was traumatic in itself. Um, even though it has been a fantastic place, it has helped me no end and continues to help me no end. Um, but I started off my blog anonymously because I was like, Jesus, I don't really want to go in forums. I don't really want to go into chat rooms, but I, I have stuff left to say and I, I want to put it out there. So the blog was started anonymously um, and actually continued to be anonymous. Um, and there was no, I never promoted it on my own social media. It was completely separate. Um, and there was no about me section in the blog at that stage. And there certainly was no photograph.